Hi there folks. Today, I wanna to share with you five tips to help improve your winter photography. Now winter is definitely my favorite time of the year to be a landscape photographer. And this is because you can shoot grand open epic landscapes such as vistas and mountains all the way down to these beautiful small intricate close-ups. Winter really provides us with unique conditions which we don't really find in any other seasons of the year. Things like snow and ice for instance. Okay guys so let's jump right into tip number one shall we. Tip number one is close-up photography. Winter in my opinion is probably the best time of the year to capture them beautiful intimate close-ups. This is because of the unique weather conditions which I just mentioned a minute ago. Snow, ice and frost, they all provide us with these exquisite backgrounds or these coverings which work so well with close-up subjects. So just fix your eyes a moment on these two photographs which I'm about to show you now. In this first photograph, you can see this example of a beautiful winter photo. This small red branch reaches out towards the light and then you've got these stunning ice crystals which are delicately positioned down the length of the branch. This is an incredible but simple photograph and it works so well. You've got the texture of the ice against the contrast of the red branch and your attention and focus is really sucked in and drawn towards it even more because of the aperture which is used to create a beautiful depth of field. Now here's another example which is quite similar in that you've got this lovely covering of frost on these pine cones. This photo works beautifully well because you've got the brown leaves and they're creating this contrast against the frozen pine cones themselves. And what's really appealing about close-up photography for me is that you don't have to travel far. In fact, I could go into my garden and I could get some really nice photographs that way. Now, if you haven't got a garden, which I know some of you won't have, there's no bother because you can go out to some local woodland or you can go out even to a local park and you can get photographs similar to the ones that you've just seen. Tip number two is minimalism. Now, winter is a great and enjoyable time to take minimalistic photographs. When the snow falls, you get this lovely white backdrop, which creates this perfect background. Now, unless your subject is white like the snow, it's gonna pop right out of the image. And this is because of the contrast against the pure white background. This is a really great time to play around with negative space. Take a look at this. You can pick out a subject like a tree, for instance, and because of the white backdrop that is created by the sky and the snow, you've got this wonderful minimalistic photo which works so well. The subject is surrounded by all this negative space, and yet your eye just keeps finding its way back to the tree. Now tip number three is texture. Some photographers really understand texture when it comes to composition but I definitely think it's one of the most overlooked things when people are looking for compositions. And yet it can be incredibly rewarding. In fact, just as rewarding as finding that perfect leading line. Winter provides us with lots of opportunities to photograph textures. Something as simple as snow's texture glistening under the morning sun, or even maybe cracking ice forming on a frozen lake. This provides us with texture and contrast. So whatever you do, don't ignore texture in winter because it can provide you really with some of the most fantastic photos. Tip number four is shoot the peaks. Now I'm not talking about the Peak District, which is a wonderful area to go and take photographs as a landscape photographer. I'm talking about the peaks themselves. Now, if you are a landscape photographer, I am sure that at some point, You've gone out with your camera and you've photographed some mountains. You could have done this from a wide open vista or alternatively, you could have done this from down in the valleys. But in winter, because of the weather conditions such as snow and ice, you get beautiful snow capped peaks. If you couple that with the morning light hitting the top of a snow capped peak, 
then you've got some conditions which are rarely matched in nature. And this is why photographing peaks in winter is an absolute must. Tip number five is woodlands. Now it might surprise you a little bit that I've actually put woodlands on this list because winter comes right after probably the most rewarding time of the year to photograph woodlands. That's autumn because in autumn you get that beautiful vibrant and colourful foliage which there really is no better time to photograph the woodlands. But in winter all the foliage falls from the trees and it creates these lifeless branches and a lot of strong contrast. Against the white snowy background you get these dark trunks and these branches and they really stand out the image and in my opinion it adds this moody and mysterious feel to your photographs. This provides a whole different kind of beauty which I know some people may not like as much but for me it really is a beautiful thing to photograph. One tip I want to add to the wooden photography is that if you can photograph in snowy conditions when you actually have snowfall then this is something you really must do. You obviously want to protect your camera gear, make sure you're not going to get any snow in your lens um, but this is something that can be really rewarding. What I will say is though, I advise that you focus in manual mode and this is because otherwise you can get some hunting on your autofocus when the snow is falling. Now these tips which I've discussed in today's video will serve you well with your winter photography if you apply them. It just gives you more options to get some really beautiful winter photographs. I shared with you guys, I don't know if you've watched it, a video last week telling you about the five tips which I've learnt uh, for landscape photography in 2018. Now these tips have really helped me come on leaps and bounds and improve my photography. It's something I've picked up from experiences and also from other photographers. So if this is something which you will find beneficial, then I advise that you check that out in a minute at the end of this video. Now if you've got any more tips that you can think of, which I haven't added in this video, I didn't wanna make this video for too long, so that's the reason I put down just five tips. But if you can think of anything else which will help people learn more, uh, especially in winter, then please put them in the comments section below. Because at the end of the day, YouTube is a community, so it should all really be about us helping each other get better at what we're passionate about. So I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video. Give me a thumbs up and a like if you enjoyed the video. And whatever you do today, guys, I hope you have a great time. And then I'll see you all next week.